Hello, and welcome to EMC Unified Storage Division's video on a virtual volume demonstration for VMworld 2013. VVols are currently being co-developed by EMC, VMware, and other storage vendors, and there is an expected release for 2014. This video will cover the basic implementation of VVols, as well as new features that are being developed. Let's now start the demo with storage provider registration. This process will connect to a storage vendor, either on or off array, which will deliver a management server that supports VVOL commands for VASA and VMware-defined VVOL API interfaces. VASA is used to create, bind, and delete VVOLs at the administrator's discretion and talks to the storage container to return VVOL IDs as well as handles for data transfer. Now that's done, we can move on to Unisphere. In Unisphere, there are three features we'll focus on that are directly related to VVOLs. In the settings menu, we'll navigate to IoT Multiplexer, and it's here that we can see all the protocol endpoints, which are IO ports for data transfer to and from VVOLs. Let's now navigate through System to Profiles. And here are all the profiles that describe the pools that VVOL data stores are provisioned from. The different levels of gold, silver, and bronze describe the storage capabilities that get published to vCenter, which will be later used to create storage containers on pools with those specific capabilities. We'll now go to Storage and click on VMware, which shows the current allocated VMware data stores. Let's click on one of the storage containers, Finance. Each of these VVOL storage containers will get mounted as data stores and can span different profiles as seen in this tab. As you can see, there are separate space allocations for each profile, which again describe the specific storage capabilities for that profile. We can now move on to mounting VVOL storage containers as data stores in vCenter. To do so, we'll click on vCenter icon and navigate to data stores. There are currently two VMFS data stores, so let's make a new VVOL data store. We'll click on Engineering Lab for our location, select VVOL for the type of data store, choose Finance as our storage container, Click on both hosts for access, review, and finish. After some time, the page will refresh showing the newly created VVOL data store. We'll now create two more data stores to use all the containers. To speed up the process, I skipped over the same steps we used before. So now there are two more data stores, human resources and engineering. You can also click on a specific data store for more information. Let's now go on to an interesting feature of creating storage service levels. Using the aforementioned storage capabilities that span certain profiles, VM admins will be able to create service levels which will be used to place their VMs. Here we'll create a new service level and name it Performance with a short description. Now we'll set the rule sets by choosing EMC VNXE as our vendor and add the capabilities we want the service level to have. In this case, FastVP and FastCache. The following page will show the data stores that match the chosen capabilities. We'll create another service level called Capacity for more options later in the demo. Now that we have everything set up, we can start creating virtual machines. We'll create a new virtual machine and name it Oracle 1 and put it in the Development VMs folder. We'll select the Virtual Volume cluster as our resource. In here, we can choose the storage service levels we created earlier. For this case, we'll choose Capacity as our service level. Now it is seen that Finance and HR are the only data stores that have the capabilities specified by the Capacity service level. We'll choose Finance. Here we'll choose ESXi 6.0 and later for capability, and Linux as our guest OS. You can also customize hardware, but we'll leave it as is and click Finish. Please note that if you don't pick a service level, you will be assigned to the default service level for the storage container. We can click on Oracle 1 to see more information if needed, and edit as necessary. Now let's go back to Unisphere and see the VMDKs that were created. In Finance, we'll click on the VM Volumes tab and see the VVOLs that were created for the VM, which include the Config VVOL and VMDK VVOL. As you can tell, VVOLs are not just VM granular. They can contain smaller components of a VM, including snapshots, 
which will be seen in the next section. Let's now take a snapshot of the virtual machine. Back in vSphere, we'll first navigate to Oracle One, our VM. Right-click it and take a snapshot. Note that creating a snapshot of a VM uses file system replica technology to create it. Also, snapshots use EMC propriety technology that consumes no space and are instantaneous, leveraging VM granular snapshotting as opposed to at the data store level. Let's name this snapshot as snap number one and click OK. Once the process completes, you're able to manage the snapshot for the VM and revert to it when needed. Leave it as is and close the window. Going back to Unisphere, we can now take a look at the snapshot of the VMDK. Navigating back to the Finance Data Store like before, and clicking on the VM Volumes tab, we can see the newly created snapshot. To show off some more capabilities, let's clone a VM to a different storage container. First right-click the VM and click Clone to Virtual Machine. You'll see a window similar to when creating a new VM. We'll name it Oracle One Clone and put the save location in the Production VMs folder. We'll choose Virtual Volume Cluster like before. In the Select Storage window, we'll select Performance as our storage service level this time, so the clone will be in a different storage container. In this case, it's the Human Resources container. After some time, the clone will appear in the Production VMs folder. We can now go to Unisphere to see the clone virtual machine. First we'll go to Finance to see the source VM. Now we'll go to the Human Resources Storage container to see the destination clone VM. For our last feature to show, we'll move on to the migration of our virtual machine between storage containers and service levels. This use case will be useful if a VM administrator needs to move VMs to better performing service levels and or to a different storage container, possibly on a different storage array, which could leverage the use of array-based optimizations for data copy. Once we click on Migrate, we can choose Change Data Store and select the data store with the wanted service level, in this case Performance. We'll click on Engineering and click Finish. After a few moments, the relocation will be completed. Before we finish, let's take a look at the migrated VM in Unisphere. As you can see in the Finance Data Store, the VBALs are no longer present. We'll now go to the Engineering Data Store, and here we can see the migrated VBALs. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on VBALs, and I thank you for your time.